In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about customer churn, what it is, how to calculate your churn rate, why people churn, and what you can do about it. Let's go. Hey, I'm Daniel, and welcome to Uscreen Health & Fitness, the best place for personal trainers, yoga instructors, brick and mortar studio owners, and more to learn how to grow their business online. Customer churn is a problem for every subscription-based business model. If you're unfamiliar, churn is a term for customers that stop using a service, and it's commonly tied to subscription and membership platforms. A churned customer is someone that has canceled their subscription and exited your service. So if someone cancels their service with you on the 5th of the month, but their subscription expires on the 25th of the month, then the 25th is their churn date. It's totally possible and really pretty common that someone would cancel this month, but churn the next month or even in a year if that's when their billing cycle ends. However, let's make an important distinction here. There's no such thing as a churned trial. We often get asked about churn trials, but that's not the best terminology. So let's just add a bit of clarification off the bat. When a person starts a trial and doesn't convert into a paying subscriber, they technically didn't churn. They just didn't convert to your service. Churn is something that happens later in the life cycle of a paying customer. So with trials, we should always talk about conversion rates not churn, and churn should be a term reserved specifically for paying subscribers, so whenever you hear us or anyone talk about churn, we're talking about paying subscribers and not trials. We'll talk more about trials and conversions in future videos, so if you're not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and do that right now so you don't miss out on those super helpful videos. Calculating your churn is actually pretty straightforward. You take the total number of customers you lose each month and divide that by the total number of customers that you started the month with, and then multiply it by 100. For example, if you have 100 subscribers to start the month and you lose five throughout the month, your churn rate would be 5%. Churn does not include the customers you gain over the same period of time. There are some tangible reasons that customers churn, including bad onboarding, poor or no ongoing customer support, bad customer service, competition, and product problems. Surprisingly though, the most common reason for churn is price, but it's not as simple as it sounds. Because even when people tell you they're leaving because of price, it often has little to do with the actual price and more to do with the customer's value system, even more so than your product. No. I'm out. In other words, your subscriber's perception of value to price ratio is tilting towards less value for the money, which is a little bit subjective. For example, Megan is a working mom of three and she starts feeling overwhelmed with everyday tasks. She considers what to cut from her life in order to streamline things a bit more. Things viewed as non-essential are the first to go and with them, your streaming service. The surface reason for canceling is that your service is too expensive or that it takes too much time, but in reality, it's the perception of value that's causing her to hit that cancel button. The good news is that a desire to cancel their subscription doesn't necessarily mean the end of your relationship. Though you might be wondering, why do we care about reducing churn? We just need more customers, right? Well, yeah, always, and that should be a focus, but you also need to factor in that it costs five times more to acquire new customers than it does to keep your existing ones. In fact, reducing your churn by just 5% could increase profits anywhere from 25 to 125%, depending on your industry, your company's age, and your business model. So what can you do? Once you've figured out your churn rate, it'll be helpful to have something to compare it against so you know how you're doing. The overall churn rate across industries is an average of 5.6%. 1.4% of that is involuntary churn, meaning that it comes from things like payment issues, while 4.2% of that is voluntary churn, which indicates customer dissatisfaction. If your churn rate is in the range of 5 to 7%, you're probably doing all right. But if it's higher than 7%, it's probably a good idea to initiate an audit of your own business. Be brutally honest with yourself in order to find the weak points that may be causing your high churn rate. Here's some questions to ask as you look for issues. Are you generating the right quality of leads? Is your audience targeting on point? Is your onboarding bad or in need of work? Do people join your service and understand how to use it or get the most value from it? Or are they left to figure it out on their own after converting? Is your customer support actually supporting customers? Or is it just doing the bare minimum? How can you take measures to go above and beyond when your customers have problems? Is your competition better than you? How can you step up and match them or even one-up them? Does your product have problems? Is it actually addressing and solving issues that your customers wanna fix? As I mentioned earlier, your customer's perception of value could be the biggest issue you're facing. What can you do to shift this in your favor? Many of your problems relating to churn could be solved by better engaging with your customers. 
That's it. It sounds simple, but it's a bit more complex than you might think. Engagement with your audience is important because it means you have to spend time with and among those who are paying you. When you first start dating someone you like, you want to spend more time with them. Why? To get to know them better, to understand them on new levels, how they speak, what's important to them, what their goals are, what language they use. As those relationships deepen, you're able to strengthen the relationship and even anticipate their wants and needs, and you learn to speak the same language so that you can be on the same page. Your relationship with your customers isn't a whole lot different. By engaging with them, you can learn so much about them and how to best serve them. Better yet, it's a two-way street. You learn about them, but they also learn about you, which means you have even more of an opportunity to better educate them and show or remind them the value that your program brings to their life. After you spend time engaging, you'll be able to better identify customers who are at risk of churning, as well as those who are incredibly valuable assets to your business. All of this starts and ends with data. I know that's a mechanical way of viewing a relationship, but it can make a massive difference in your business. If you don't record the reasons people churn from your streaming platform, you need to be. Create and implement a survey. Ask them what they didn't like about your service and see if you can find out what types of changes would win them back. Better yet, you can do this before they actually churn by surveying your existing customers. There are a number of tools out there to help you reduce churn in your business. Unfortunately, that often involves multiple pieces of software and additional subscriptions. But I've got great news for those of you with your own video streaming platform. With Uscreen, we actually have a tool built into the platform to help you reduce churn in your business, and it's available to every single one of our customers. When you use our platform and a customer goes to cancel, our reduced churn tool shows them a survey asking why they're canceling. Once they complete that survey, they're offered a discount on their next billing cycle if they don't cancel. Some of these customers will continue with their cancellation, but a number of those people will decide to stick around, effectively helping to reduce your churn rate. This tool is amazing because it not only helps reduce churn in your business, but it also collects valuable information via the survey. This feedback from your customers can be pivotal in helping you improve your business and give people more of what they want, which also helps reduce churn. If you're interested, you can learn more about Uscreen at the link in the description. Be sure to watch the video over there for your next best step when it comes to your online fitness business. If you got some value out of this video, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button below so we can stay connected. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.